Welcome to another UDK tutorial. In this video we will focus on post process effects. There are three ways to tweak with the post process chains. This is through the use of volumes, world info and master post process chain assets in your content browser. To begin with we will look at using a post process effect volume. If you wish to follow along with this video, create a blank map and create a room. Make sure that the room has a light and a player start actor before you begin. Now, select your builder brush and right click the volumes button. You want to select the post process volume. Select the volume and hit F4 to bring up its properties. Tick override world post process chain so the volume overrides the world's effects chain. Under the settings you will see all the effects our volume offers us. It has bloom, depth of field, motion blur, ambient occlusion, room shader, desaturation, and down at the bottom, you can edit the scene's highlights, midtones, and shadows. As a quick start, let's take a look at using the motion blur and editing the scene's highlights, midtones, and shadows. Here, I enable the motion blur's velocity and its amounts. At the default amounts, they don't do much, so let's increase them. For velocity, I set it to 5, and for the amount, I set it to 3. When the map is run, our player is inside our post-process volume, which is giving us this motion blur effect as we move. For now, deselect velocity and amount, and scroll down to desaturation. At 0 there is no desaturation in colour. At 1 there is complete desaturation. Any value in between 0 and 1 can offer interesting results if tweaked properly. Now let's take a look at the highlight, midtones, and shadow settings. Highlights control the white points in the scene. Click the arrow to reveal the X, Y, and Z values. Think of the X, Y, and Z values as RGB values. These values go from zero up. The closer to zero, the more white is introduced into the color. The higher the value offers less white points. By using a value of 0.3 on X, Y, and Z, the white points in the level are very visible. Midtones control the gamma curve, which is more of a contrast of colours that are not affected by highlights and shadows. This too has X, Y, Z values to tweak. And finally, we have the shadows which control the black points. Again, they have X, Y, and Z values. The closer to zero means more black points. The higher values remove black points. Feel free to experiment with these values. Let's test what we've learned so far. I'm going to create a vivid red color. Then I'll resize the volume, so half of my room is inside the volume, and then I'll enable the motion blur. If you're doing this as well, don't forget to rebuild your level. As you can see, when the player is outside the volume, nothing happens. As soon as the player enters the volume, the effects run and you're greeted with a red, motion blurred view. You have now created a post-process volume. In order to apply a post-process effect to an entire level, go to View in the main menu bar, then select World Properties. Under Rendering you will find the same settings you had for your volume. The last way to apply a post-process effect is through a chain asset. In your content browser, select all types and scroll to post-process effect chains. Double click on UT post process underscore console. If you wish to create a custom post-process chain, you'll be doing it via this asset. The main node that you will want is an uber post-process chain node. 
This features the settings we saw earlier. It has depth of field, bloom, motion blur, color grading and tone mapping settings inside. Unlike in the other settings, here you can set a material effect node which takes the material as a parameter and renders it over the player's screen. I hope this video has given you a better understanding of how post-process effects are created and used. In the description below I've linked the relevant UDN documentation on post-process effects. In my next video we will look at materials and terrain. Thank you for watching.